that it fires a 17 pound shell and it fires it at just a, literally a couple of miles an hour under 2,000 miles an hour. And so that's a kinetic a weapon. In other words, it's a solid lump of hardened tungsten steel, which when it hits the tank will make a hole through it. And this this gun could poke holes through basically any German tank that was fielded by the German army during the Second World War. The vehicle that you can see Tom driving there, with a passenger who I think has uh, stowed away on the back in his camouflage suit, I think the guys haven't seen him, um, is a Morris Portee. And that, that vehicle was originally designed to carry the two-pounder anti-tank gun on its back. And this was back in 1940 when we were ready to be invaded. And what happened was that we built these trucks, put the two-pounder on the back, and the idea was that they could drive around the countryside knocking out German tanks. When the two-pounder became obsolete, the vehicles were surplus, and so they were reconverted to tow this new 17-pounder anti-tank gun. And surprisingly, with the truck weighing in at three and a half tons, um, with the gun weighing in at another three and a half tons, the combination was dropped in Hamilcar gliders into Arnhem in 1944. And you can imagine that must have been a very frightening experience. Having said that, um, I think it was the 17 or 18 uh, Hamilcar gliders that were dropped, 11 of the guns got out satisfactorily and joined in the fighting uh, around Arnhem. Six-man detachment, um, and we're going to hear one of the rounds now. So when you're ready, fire. The 17-pounder, because it was such a powerful weapon, was fighting with German tanks out to about 1,800 yards. Generally, the crews would want to fight closer to home than that, at about 500 yards, but 2,000 metres was very much a comfortable range for this gun. If you'd like to fire the second round when you're ready. Happy customer there. Um, the, what would normally happen with the 17-pounders and the 2-pounders is that they would hide out of the way of the German tanks and when the tanks arrived they would aim to fire their, their shot and it was very important for them to hit the target with the first round because you've seen how much smoke and dust gets kicked up and if you didn't hit the tank with the first round they could see where you were and they would shoot back at you. So these crews became very good at deploying their guns, getting them into position and waiting for the targets, effectively ambushing them uh, and then shooting them and knocking them out with the first round. A little bit later in the war there were a variety of more complicated rounds which were not just kinetic uh, rounds which relied on their, uh, the energy of them being thrown at the, the, the tank. Um, there were high explosive rounds, there were smoke rounds, white phosphorus rounds, um, but also a discarding sabo round. And that's essentially where you fire a much smaller, narrower dart of tungsten at the uh, target, but you wrap it in three pieces of aluminium as it's fired out of the gun. And as soon as it gets out of the end of the barrel, travelling very fast, those three pieces of aluminium fly off under the air pressure, and the, the energy that's been imparted to them is imparted to the dart, which is much narrower and has therefore got much less air resistance. So it travels much further downrange, retaining its energy, and makes a good hole in anything that it hits. Having said that, they were generally not quite as accurate 